Okay, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to talk through the basic ideas of implicit differentiation, really just explaining what it means to differentiate something that is implicit, and go through one example to get you started. The main examples on this topic are provided in a different video. So to get us going, I just want to talk about what we have done so far. So, so far we have been defining relations explicitly. So we have something that's like y equals x squared, k equals t to the fifth minus e to the t, m equals x divided by x plus six. In all of these examples, we have a variable equals. So we know what y is, we know what k is, we know what m is. In all of these examples, we have the variables separated. So we have y equals something with x's, k equals something with t's, m equals something with x's. And so we know the relationship clearly between the variables x and y, k and t, and m and x. But we can also define relationships between variables implicitly. And this really just means that the variables are all tangled up in each other. They still depend on one another. y depends on x, k depends on t, m depends on x. But it's just harder to see that relationship because we don't just have y equals, k equals, m equals. So for example, we could have x squared plus y squared equals one, k over t is five t, or mx equals x plus six. Here, the variables are still related to each other, it's just not as clear what that relationship is. We don't just have y equals something. We know y and x are related, but we don't necessarily have it really explicitly stated for us. It's implicit because the variables are all tangled up. So we wanna be able to take derivatives in situations where relationships are defined implicitly. We want to have the power to be able to do that and not just take derivatives when things are explicit. So the method for this really isn't too complicated. We still use everything we know about derivatives. We just have something a little different to consider since we have the variables on the same side of the equation. So let's consider an example we've maybe seen before and are familiar with. So let's do x squared plus y squared equals one. This is a circle of radius one centered at the origin, which is our unit circle. And we'd like to be able to talk about the slope of the tangent line at various points on this circle. So this isn't a function, it doesn't pass the vertical line test, but it still has behavior we're interested in. And so we want to be able to find tangent lines, find slopes, and talk about them. We want to be able to take the derivative of points on this circle. And specifically, the slopes on the circle are how y is changing with respect to x. So we're looking for a change in y over a change in x which is a dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x. So our goal when we're trying to find the slopes or the derivative of implicitly defined things is to find dy dx. We could shake things up and do other variables, but really most of the time we do dy dx, so I'm just gonna focus on that. Okay, so let's say we're looking at this and we're trying to find dy dx. What could we do? Well, we could always just solve for y and do what we're used to. So I could move x squared to the right hand side, take the square root, but then I need a plus or minus, and so I have y equals the positive square root and y equals the negative square root. And with this, we could then differentiate with respect to x. We have something now explicitly defined, it's just in two parts, so we're gonna need to take two derivatives. And just so you know, the positive square root refers to the top part of the circle, that's because the y values are positive, so it's above to the top part. And then the negative portion of the square root is the bottom half of the circle. Just a comment. So, okay, using our old method, we can just take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. I'm gonna to have to do some chain rule here. So the one half comes in front, I leave the inside alone, the power decreases to negative one half, and I multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is negative two x. So, okay, I've taken this derivative, I can simplify it a little bit move the negative exponent to the denominator, cancel those twos out, and I'm left with negative x all over the square root of one minus x squared. That's the derivative of the top portion of the circle. Then I have to repeat this process for the bottom half of the circle. So I take the derivative again. It's going to look super similar here. I just have an extra negative. And so those negatives will cancel out and I'm left with positive x all over the square root of one minus x squared. Okay, I'm getting tired even doing that because it really doesn't need to take us that long in order to find the derivative of y with respect to x. We are going to introduce a faster option and this is going to be our implicit differentiation. 
So instead of simplifying or moving anything around at the beginning, we are just going to take the derivative with respect to x of both sides. Since our ultimate goal is to get a derivative of y with respect to x, we want to be taking the derivative with respect to x. So what this means is that the variable we are considering is x. We're not taking the derivative with respect to y. We're taking the derivative with respect to x. So anytime we encounter a y, y isn't the variable we're considering. y is implicitly defined with relation to x, so it has some x's sort of involved in it. Like we saw before, y was equal to the plus or minus square root of all that x stuff. So anytime we take a derivative of y, we need to be keeping in mind that y is related to x. It's defined in terms of x. So that's something that's going to come up in a little bit. Keep that in mind as we're working through. So if I just follow ahead with what I know about derivatives, taking the derivative of both sides, I can do the derivative of x squared plus the derivative of y squared, and that is equal to zero. That's the derivative of one. So we're comfortable with taking the derivative with respect to x of x squared. That's just two x. But now we have something new with the derivative with respect to x of y squared. So I like to think that we do it basically as we're used to. The power comes in front, so we have two y, it decreases to a power of 1. Then we just need to multiply by the derivative of y with respect to x. So why do we do this? I want you to remember that y is dependent on x. Whatever the value of x is changes the value of y. So really what's happening here is a chain rule. We have something squared, and that something is dependent on x. So the outside function is something squared, and the inside function is y. So the two comes in front, the power decreases by one with the inside left alone, so that's the two y, and then we multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And instead of doing anything here to be like, oh, well, what is the derivative of y with respect to x? Remember, that's what we're trying to find. Our prompt is to find the derivative of y with respect to x. So this process is actually gonna help us get there. So it's sort of like we are solving this problem without simplifying first, and we're gonna simplify at the end of the problem. Instead of solving for y equals and then getting dy dx equals, we're just going to take the derivative right away and then solve for dy dx at the end of the problem. Okay, so again, just think that y is a something that is involved with x. So we're doing the derivative with respect to x of something squared. The 2 comes in front. The power decreases by 1. And then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside part. So you could write this as 2y times y prime. I just really like using the dy dx notation because it helps me see specifically what the derivative is that I'm trying to find. The derivative of y with respect to x helps me keep track of the variable, but that's something you could use if you like it better. So remember, our goal is to find the derivative of y with respect to x, dy dx. And now we have it as part of our equation. We've taken the derivative and I have a dy dx there. So I'm just going to solve for dy dx like it's a variable that I'm going to isolate and get by itself and I'm going to end up with something that looks like dy dx equals. So let's move the 2x over to the right hand side, and then I'm going to divide by 2y to get dy dx alone. So I'm left with dy dx equals negative 2x over 2y, and I can cancel those 2's out and get a negative x over y. And that is my derivative of y with respect to x. Now, you might be thinking, Hey, Clara, that doesn't look like what we got before. Our thing we had had a bunch of square roots in it. Well, we can do one more step if we want, where we solve for y, we get y equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared, and then we replace y with that. So now we have a derivative that looks like what we got on the previous part in our slow method. But what is nice about implicit differentiation is that it allows us to find the derivative without needing to do all that work. We can just say the derivative of y with respect to x is negative x over y. That's much simpler than having all of those square roots involved. Okay, so we have the derivative of y with respect to x, and a lot of times this is all we are asked to find, but sometimes we are also asked to find an equation of a tangent line. So let's try that out. Let's say we're looking for the equation of a line that's tangent to this curve, the unit circle, at the point 1 half root 3 over 2. So we were given a point but we're going to need a slope. To write our equation of a line, we need a point and a slope. Luckily, our dy dx is exactly the slope we need. That's the derivative, it represents the slope, and we can plug in our specific point we want to know the slope for. So the derivative of y with respect to x is negative x over y, 
and I'm going to plug in the point one half root three over two. So I have negative one half all divided by root three over two. I can multiply by the reciprocal to simplify this fraction and I'm left with the slope is negative one over root three. You could rationalize this, make it look a little prettier. I'm not gonna try too hard, I'm just going to show you what the equation looks like. So we found a slope, we were given a point, I can put that information in. I have y minus root three over two is equal to negative one over root three times x minus a half. And this would be my equation of the tangent line at the point we were given. We can look at a graph and make sure this matches what we think it should be. So I have graphed the unit circle here, put the point on it, and drawn our line here, and it looks like a tangent line to me. So we have successfully used implicit differentiation to find the equation of a tangent line of a unit circle, which is defined implicitly. Okay, hopefully that gave you a little bit of a head start on implicit differentiation. The main idea is here is that we are finding dy dx without solving for y first. We're just taking the derivative of both sides and going forward, being careful with the y's to remember that we need chain rule. We always need to multiply by dy dx. I have two more videos of examples with implicit differentiation. So watching those, you should be ready to do any implicit differentiation problem that's thrown your way. This was just more of a conceptual introduction to get you started. Those example videos will really help you out in practicing these concepts. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.